lest in the tensions and social upheavals we forget that this is God's world. Here are some of the fruit of Jeremiah's difficult prophetic ministry. Firstly, the Babylonians did capture Jerusalem and they destroyed the temple and a large portion of the Jewish society was carried off into exile just as Jeremiah had warned them. Painful as all this was, the people learnt that God ruled the whole world and would even be able to use a pagan nation like the Babylonians to be God's instrument. So their vision of God was expanded. God can use pagan nations as his tool. Secondly, they learned that God's reign was much broader and wider than they had previously thought or experienced. They learned that God was not restricted to the precincts of the temple in Jerusalem, but that he could even be worshipped in a foreign land. Their temple had been destroyed. But they learned that God himself has not been destroyed. We have evidence of this in our Bibles. In Psalm 137, brings us the fruit of their worship in Babylon. And I'm sure you all remember, by the rivers of Babylon, there we wept. How can we serve God in a foreign land? Made popular by Boniem, but it's in the scriptures. Thirdly, they learned that God's judgment on them was not the final word, but God's judgment would trigger repentance and restoration. Fourthly, they learned that God's covenant was not something that had to be kept in a box in the temple, but God would make a new covenant which is now written on their hearts and that God's covenant would be with them wherever they went or wherever they were taken to. And finally, unknown to them but clear to us, out of Judah, that same disobedient Judah, a descendant a descendant of David would come into the world, the long-awaited Messiah, to rule in righteousness and grace. This is what the people of Judah learnt, having passed through the, this difficult and painful period in their history. Although it's now roughly 2,600 years that separate us from the events that concern Jeremiah, the words penned by the French writer Jean-Baptiste Gare in 1849 are still relevant today. The more things change, the more they remain the same. Like Judah, we here in this country are relatively speaking in a small and insignificant country in the world arena. Our economy is shrinking. Our influence is dwindling. We too have weak leadership and a pervasive culture of corruption and disregard for the sanctity of human life, contrary to what God has intended. We too find ourselves enmeshed in the power struggles and plays of the superpowers today, Russia, China and America earning the approval of some and the scowls of others. What can we learn from Jeremiah's insights? Lest in the tensions and social upheavals we forget that this is God's world. This is God's world. As recorded in Psalm 24, the world and everything in it belongs to the Lord. We may also add, even the church belongs to God. It doesn't belong to us. It was here before we were born, and the church will continue after we have left this world. It belongs to God. These are stabilizing reali realities that speak to us in an unstable world. Secondly, we also learn today's prophets, God's whistleblowers, are not guaranteed divine protection 
that should expect a crown of thorn. A crown, yes, for doing God's work, but thorns for the pain that it will bring. Thirdly, despite the tumult and uncertainty that surround us, let us give thanks to the Lord. Praise God for being faithful and, rema and remaining as a stable foundation upon which we can stand. Like Jeremiah, he just burst in praise despite all his hardships. And finally, we can also learn, do not become disillusioned, for the outworking of God's plans may well not be for us to enjoy, but reserved for later generations. It is in God's time, not ours.